Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. How are you? All right, let's do this. DEFCON 4, Map Room. We're still celebrating the 30th anniversary of Image Comics. Look, and I know there's some people that have requested um, artists that are outside of the Image Comics uh, canon. Don't worry, I will get to those videos, but I'm on a mission to, to do 30... Um, spotlight videos that celebrate the 30th anniversary of image so i'm trying to pick stuff that's a variety of of styles a, ver a variety of era but era meaning i'm really trying to hit between 1992 and like 2000 because in my opinion by 2000 image comics kind of had sort of dissipated there was still there were still channels that you could get that fix but um, the real heyday of Image was 92 to like 90, 98, honestly. Um, I think after that, there was still some good Image quality um, stuff coming out. But anyway, so Map Room. I've got lots of stories, fun stuff, all kinds of insights. Let me hit really, really quickly just some updates. Um, I have uh, 14 pages of Crystal Planet left, so I'm really getting towards the end of this. It's very, very exciting for me. In fact, yesterday I really had to kind of um, uh, be be super adult and super disciplined and and not rush because <laughs> I can see the finish line and I'm I'm very, very excited to be finished with that so I can start Blaster Kid in, a, in a, an appropriate way where I'm de devoting 100% of my time to it. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to hack out a book uh just to be finished so i'm i've i've learned so much and my skills have improved quite a bit working on crystal planet and each issue is looking better and better so i i want to make sure that the this final issue that i do is the best that i've done and um uh, one of my mantras that i've always um used for anything that i do drawing wise is finish stronger than you start whether it's a page whether it's a book whether it's a series in my opinion you should let me grab my uh, stylus because it'll be easier to do this video anyway um yeah the thing is is and this is this will just be like a tip for people is look there's an there's an amount of energy that it takes to do anything with art whether it's a single piece or not but the thing is is a lot of people start with a lot of enthusiasm like this and as they work they they move it up and then they want to get finished and so they start to rush and the quality sometimes can drop really what you want to do with any piece is it's like yeah, you're excited about it. The excitement's mounting. Things are turning out good. You need to finish it up here. And the same goes for a book or a series. You can't you can't do three kick-ass pages and then fry yourself and, and do this. So it's just one of those things that I've always done. It's like the last two hours of a page, I'm more focused. I'm trying to do better lines than I was earlier. The same goes for a comic book or whatever. Sorry, anyway, let's get to this. So DEFCON 4. Matt Broom was really good at this point he had been working well i don't know I, I honestly don't know what he did before image comics we can go into full screen mode for a second um I don't, I don't know if he had done some comic work. I'm, I want to, I'm, I vaguely, vaguely remember that he might have done like a little tiny bit of something before he got to Image, but I could be off on that. But anyway, Matt, the first stuff that I saw of Matt was on Stormwatch, I believe. Um, he wasn't the original artist. Scott Clark started Stormwatch. Matt might have been like the second wave of Image talent. Like, um, I've talked about this before that there were kind of waves. So, so the initial wave obviously is all the core creators: Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, all the names that that kind of are the um, the headline names. Then they did a talent search at Wildstorm. So, at Wildstorm in particular, what ended up happening is you had the wave two, which was J. Scott Campbell, Matt Broom, you know, wh whoever came in with that. Then there's a third wave of people that kind of came in after them, possibly Dan Norton, Sandra Hope. Um, uh, Tom Ranney, um, and I'm kind of like the fifth or sixth wave of artists that came in, um, but um, Matt Matt kind of falls in the middle. And the thing is, is is even when the seven original founders, we'll call it, started the the, the Image Comics, there were already um, artists that were working at the studio that were um, I consider them still first wave. I think Trevor Scott might fall into that category. Um, there were a few people that were working with those with those guys, but anyway, so so Matt's now about three years into his professional career. We'll say maybe four, maybe five. If he did stuff before he got to Image Comics, he's drawing very very well. He's got you know maybe a thousand professional. Well, how many would it be? Two. We'll say we'll say he did two hundred pages a year. So he's he's got somewhere between probably six and eight hundred pages under his belt. 
he's ready to go. I remember when Matt was was creating this idea. He Matt is the most enthusiastic and nicest guy you could ever meet. I, I don't I don't think I've ever seen Matt in a bad mood ever. He's like a ball of energy. He's like Ryan Benjamin in a way. Both of those guys are very like they're very like um they're in they live in the moment and so when matt got the opportunity to do this book there wasn't there wasn't like a ton of um like creator owned books coming through wildstorm yet i mean j scott campbell did gen 13 and he was working on danger girl but in in a way this was kind of like matt's danger girl so he's got this you know very cool kind of you know neon tokyo kind of thing and this cool team of superheroes it's just everything that matt loves so anyway let's get into this the inks on this are by sean parsons he did an absolutely phenomenal job there's they were such a good pair um and uh and anyway this is the cover you guys are going to be super impressed by this book if you've never seen this this is going to knock your socks off it's really really good so um and I've got the first two issues, so we're going to do two books of this. So this is the the full cover, wraparound. I'm telling you, Matt Matt was so good at this point. He was doing some really interesting stuff, too. So this kind of hair, he would do these ribbon hair where he would take, like, these nice big shapes. Wasn't really, like, like you hadn't seen it a lot in, in any of the image creators. So he's bringing in cartooning elements um, that really were a little different. Matt has a very stylish way that he approaches putting blacks on things. They're very, very graphic shapes. Um, and as he went along, he started to use it more. This is a very, very detailed piece. This would take multiple days to either pencil or ink. This is not something that you sit down and knock out in like, you know, a day or even two days, honestly. This takes planning. This takes a lot of patience and, you know, kind of that, that, that motto that I, I instill, which is that, you know, finish as strong as you start, if not even a little stronger. Um, right, let's get to Oh, this is so exciting. All right. This is interesting, too. Okay, this sequence, although this is done before he did X-Men Wildcats Dark Ages, uh, he has actually a mechanical apple in it, which is kind of funny. Um, I'm nearly sure that, that there's um, a sequence in X-Men Wildcats. I almost was going to do a little bit of the Dark Ages book. Um, but anyway, so uh, we've got this really really nice very cool character designs again this is a little more um something you might see uh not necessarily sylvestri do like note for note but that that kind of vibe but man i remember when they were working on this not being jealous but it was definitely one of those times where um for me i hadn't done anything super kick-ass in comic books yet i had been at wildstorm for about two years and my career was really starting to flail. I just was kind of going from one late book to the next, um, and just wasn't. I wasn't able to find a home. I wasn't able to match up with one penciler and do like a body of work. And it was not disappointing or frustrating, but I was just like, I guess I'm just not going to have that opportunity. I ended up doing more samples while I was a professional there to sort of show my capabilities because. Um, you know, you're kind of judged as an inker on what you ink, and, and if you, you're not inking stuff that other pencilers are into, it's a, it's a little more challenging to get their attention. Um, but anyway, um, but I remember when these pages were coming in and Matt was working on it, just going like, fuck, man, I would love to work on something this nice. Like, this just looks fun and dynamic and it's all the things that i enjoyed about like image comics like in one book and this stuff in black and white is absolutely stunning it, it was they were such beautiful originals sean's control of like his feathering and stuff like that was flawless the the inks were bold sometimes if you if you see like top cow black and white art and i'm not knocking top cow to be clear so just listen to what i'm going to say before you take it too far Sometimes when I would see Top Cow original art or like Aspen original art, it's very, very flat when you see it in black and white. It doesn't pop. Um, for whatever reason, they they tend to ink very thin. Not, not really Joe or Bat, but some of the other books that I'd seen. Um, and yeah, you you see the, the original in black and white, and it doesn't really like it's it's still very nice, but it doesn't it doesn't have a punch to it. These really had a punch. They were very bold. I think part of it too is how much black Matt would put on the pieces. But uh, 
Yeah, it's interesting. So, oh, okay, this might have been a quadruple page spread. See, Matt was pulling out all the stops. This was not normal. You didn't get opportunities like this at this point. He had, he definitely had to, to um, grease the wheels big time to get this. Because this, again, a quadruple page spread probably cost more money to print. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he wanted everything that, like, J. Scott Campbell was getting. Because Jeff would always push for, like, sketchbook sections in the backs of his books and things like that. And, you know, like I said, Matt, Matt, Matt's got a very sharp business mind, too. He's, he's, he's legit. Really, really um, good guy to learn from. Just, 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 uh, like, on how he handles his, his shit. So, anyway... We've got this kind of dark sci-fi, apocalyptic, cyberpunk kind of world going on, you know. At this point, most of the artists at, at Wildstorm in particular, we were all big fans of anime. There was all kinds of kick-ass, um, you know, just animation that we were all vibing on. And so, you you know, you had all these influences coming into... Um, what we were doing, which, you know, obviously was rooted in, like, American comics, so. And also great manga, too, you know, that's the thing. This is kind of rights in ish And the thing is, is we had some really, really talented artists coming through Wildstorm. I mean, Michael Lopez did a piece that was kind of similar to this, uh, probably a little bit before this. Um, that was kind of a riff off of the rights and thing, but Michael Lopez in particular was one of those guys that just being around him, you wanted to be better because he was so good. Someone like J. Scott Campbell, if you're around him, you want to be better because he's so good. Jim Lee, Wolf Partaccio, Travis, I mean, all like everybody is vibing off that. But you know, Brett Booth turns in something that's kick ass or whoever. Um, you know, you're excited. Ryan Benjamin, you know was killing it on grifter at that point um okay so this so this this is uh, like he kind of got nailed it's i think it's a bit of a swipe from apple seed you know i i i vaguely remember seeing that that it might have been um it, it's it's still very cool you know i don't i don't uh, encourage people to like swipe um, I, I'm not gonna try to do a one for one and see like how many buildings match up, but either way, this is a very, very kick-ass double page spread and, uh, you know, I'll let the swipe police, uh, <laughs> search for the perp. Um, I think it's, it's really, really cool, man. I mean, you know. The thing is, is, is like, here's my thing on swipes. Cause I give a lot of lessons and reviews and stuff like that. And I'm always trying to help artists like learn and grow and be better. You really don't need to swipe. That's the thing. You, <laughs> if, if you could copy this, you could make up your own version of it. But I, I think people don't believe in that. There's nothing on this. That's really that hard to do. It's just, it's like you save time, I guess, light boxing parts of it. I don't, I don't know, you know? Um, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing really hard on this to draw. If you understand perspective, um, and want to have patience, you could do it. And the thing is, is this took forever for Matt to draw. That's the thing is this, this took an extraordinary amount of time to pencil and ink and the rewards is it's fucking awesome, you know? So, I mean, if you're going to spend that much time on something, spending the extra four or five hours laying it out, I mean, you might as well. Then you can, you know, not have to worry that, uh, you know, someone's going to out you. <laughs> this is cool. Again, big, big, chunky black shapes on this stuff. It's really cool. I'm hoping I can find... Um, Ryan Benjamin did a book called Phantom Guard that's really good. I would like to do Phantom Guard. Um, I actually grabbed a Trevor Scott book that probably most of you have never seen called Black Sun. It's one of the first digitally drawn comic books, in my opinion, ever. Um, and, you know, Trevor... Trevor is known for being an inker, but he also penciled and inked Deathblow for a really long time, a couple of years. Um, and that's really good with drapery, too. He's, he's always done really nice... Um, uh, I don't know, like folds and like bed sheets and whatnot. This guy's cool. 
Colors are really nice on this. I actually um, we'll we'll look on. Oh, this is probably Wendy. So Wendy Fouts Broom is is Matt's wife. You'll see her earlier before they got married as Wendy Fouts. But she was she was a top colorist for for Wildstorm for a long long time. One of the best and and a really really nice person too. And and quite an artist. A lot of the, a lot of the really good colorists at Wildstorm were actually pretty good artists. They weren't not necessarily all comic book artists, but they definitely had like artistic ability. Like they could paint, or they had other hobbies and stuff like that that they would pursue. Um, this is great, man. You can see a little bit of the Campbell influence, you know, like on this a little bit. This is cool. This is nice. Kind of like a little, like this reminds me a little bit of some of the Brandon Peterson stuff at that point. You know, Brando would always have these like real graphic blacks, perfect feathering, um, and uh, kind of like a Michael Golden sort of vibe. And then funny, it's because that kind of looks like Michael Golden's si signature. Mac Note. That's actually pretty cutting edge because this would have been done around 1997. That's kind of funny. All you computer nerds will have to tell me, was was there a Mac Note at that point in 1997? I don't remember. I didn't get my first home computer until 99. This is nice. This is good, too. All right. This painting? That was the big thing back then, is girls would get naked all this is a dude but they'd get naked and they would paint with their bodies <laughs> it's like what are you talking about rich dudes did it too he's he's like a his body is like jackson pollock <laughs> oh, this is cool Man, there was I, I mentioned this in another video, and, and, and actually um, someone was able to help me track him down. There was an artist that I really liked, um, probably about a, I wouldn't know, it would have been a year or two after this, named Locke, and not not um, Andy Locke or something like that. He just went by Locke. He's he's on Art Station now as like his normal name, but uh, he would do black and white art that was kind of influenced by Shiro. Man, he could crush shit like this. I want to, I, I actually need to do, I want to do um, uh, a spotlight on that guy, on those books, because they're, they're so kick-ass. You can see, this is really, really nice. Really, really good book, man. This guy has, I wasn't really paying attention before, but he's, he's kind of like, I'm trying to think of who it reminds me of. Who is that artist? Like, uh, Maybe like Joe Casada, like some of the early Casada stuff. Casada would spot a lot of black on um, like uh, sort of Azrael and uh, Ninjak and stuff like that. Oh man, this is so good. Look at that. Killer colors, but man, the drawings are so badass. Matt's really good at these big guys. Man, it's so good. She's cool. This is a nice little position with the foot. There's a lot of panels on this page. Four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. He used the space really effectively. It doesn't feel cramped at all. Ah, oh, man, look at that. Damn. It's good stuff, man. It, you know, and it, it was interesting too because I was thinking about this the other day um, uh, as we've been doing these videos. Is I remember that for for me. Once I kind of got into the image style, the only stuff that I would like that wasn't like image vibey had to be like where it was like not even attempting it at all. If you tried to walk the walk but missed the mark, that to me was a bigger crime than um, <laughs> like, uh, what would you call it? Like, uh, like Mignola or Michael Golden where they're just there. They like do their style and they're not they're not trying to be this. But um, yeah, you'd sometimes see people kind of try to dip their toe with like a little bit of the image, but then they would try to kind of stay with what they were doing before if they had been in comics for, for five or ten years before image hit you'd be like oh no this doesn't this doesn't have the spice i'm looking for i need the salsa the, the salsa and guacamole that uh, image delivers <laughs> but matt matt was moving away from the hatching you know 
these are these are more like um, different different like lines. But again, this is the 1995 and 96, 97 rolled along. You had a lot of people coming into comics, and the styles started to change. And um, then there was the purge. I called it in the last video, which was uh, ninety six and ninety seven. And what you had is you had all the people that got hired between ninety two and ninety five. Um, only the cream of the crop was sticking around. So this was when people started to lose their jobs, and companies were starting to tighten their belts and not, you know publish as many books because it wasn't the fans weren't buying just any any freaking thing that was coming out you know man this is a lot of work really really great looking comic though and issue two doesn't disappoint he actually was able to keep the momentum going oh this is such a great shot I remember this look at this I mean, Matt really, really was into this. You can just see it. And he loves technology. It's so funny that he's able to put all this stuff in because it's really, Matt's very cutting edge would be what I call it. Which, again, that's sort of a personality trait that he and Ryan have. Ryan takes to any new thing. Just like, man, he just dives right in. And then he'll, he'll have learned it in like three days. <laughs> oh, so good. This is awesome. And this is great. A lot of talent. A lot of talent. A lot of hard work, too. All right, here we go. At this point, too, you know, you had um, Umberto Ramos and Joe Matarera were just about lining up to come to Wildstorm. They they came over, I think, in like 97, 98, because that would have been Danger Girl. I'd have to check the dates on this. We'll look we'll look at the second issue. Um because we're going we're gonna do the second issue next this is very Campbell. Um but uh yeah I'm trying to remember when Cliffhanger started. Oh that's cool. Damn he had what three double page spreads in this book or four? Uh, yeah, this is so good. All right. Oh, man, that's cool, too. Great colors. Let's see what we got here. And there's Matt right there. A word for Matt Broom. Yeah, so we've got... Um, oh, Edwin Roselle color ink the first issue. Interesting. Okay, okay. And then Sean Parsons came on later. So Edwin, Edwin had that warm inking quality too. That's funny. Okay, so I wonder... Maybe Edwin did this whole... Um, this whole mini series and then Sean Parsons came on for X-Men Wildcats. I bet that's what it was is they switched because Edwin started inking um, Jason Johnson and uh, a lot of stuff. Jeremy Cox. So that would lead me to believe that. So <laughs> it's funny how he's got it all like a movie because I think Matt really did see this as like a movie for himself. So she did color guides, my guess is, and then Jeremy Cox did the digital color steps. Both did a beautiful job, and then you've got Wildstorm effects doing it also. A design is Merv. That means the like layout of the book, um, and uh, so it's written. Oh no! So screenplay by Jeff Marriott. So I'm gonna hmm, I'm gonna guess Jeff wrote it. Matt drew it. And then, let me see one thing. So it was created by Matt. Maybe he gave the idea to Jeff Marriott, and then Marriott um, kind of orchestrated it all for him. It's a little confusing. We'll see what the credits are. I think, I almost want to say that he might have shifted the credits a little bit on the, um, oh, here we go. This is cool. I like this. A little bit of extra info on uh, where everyone's 
located and whatnot. Like I said, if you if you are interested, I mean, you could try to seek out the apple seed spread and see if uh, like how much of this is similar. I'm not gonna waste my time doing that. I don't really care. But um, all right, I got bigger fish to fry than to worry about that shit. <laughs> All right, don't peek. So you don't want to spoil the second book. All right, so let's see. So, okay, here we go. Now what do we got? I just want to see the credits. So so he kept this. Okay, so I want JD inked a little bit too. So Edwin Rizal inked it with JD. JD's a great ink, inker. Uh, Salim Crawford did ink assists for these guys. Um, Wendy Fouts did the color guides. Uh, that's Mike Heisler did the lettering. Again, Mike is a letterer. He was also editor-in-chief at Wildstorm. And... Um, wrote and created um, Union. Rochelle Brisden is Travis Charest's wife now. Um, so uh, all kinds of good friends. All right, so let's start at the top. Tippy top. All right, Defcon 4, number two. Fantastic cover. Again, getting, getting a little Michael Golden vibes, possibly a little J. Scott Campbell vibes, map room vibes. Matt has a very fancy signature, and this is Edwin Rizal. So it is, this is Matt and Edwin on this cover. Right, we got a gardener outside. I'm going to shut this really quick. We got a gardener. Yeah, Edwin was a great inker. He had a really, really, like, nice, chunky, beefy, almost like graffiti-style line. And then killer, killer feathering. He was awesome. So good. But he actually he was he was like an he was an, a wildstorm inker that actually I I think had a different style. He wasn't just doing um, the image um, sort of uh, cross hatching and waggles and all that. You can see um, Edwin's work on. Um, Michael Lopez and and I think Edwin was was probably influenced by Alex Garner to some extent. I mean, he definitely had his own thing, but I think that there was a little bit of Garner in his stuff. I know he really liked Alex's stuff. This is awesome. Different style though. Like I can tell that this is J JD and not um Edwin. This doesn't look like Edwin's inks to me. It's a little more gritty. This was beaten up JD. He was like, "What did I get myself into? This is a lot of work." <laughs> JD was nuts though. JD could definitely throw down, but yeah, this definitely doesn't look like Edwin. This was early. This was early in JD's um, solo inking career, meaning where he was. JD went from an assistant to like lead inker. Um, so there's always that. Now you have to manage your energy and stamina and you know focus 100 percent on your own. You're not just doing like a background for someone definitely it's it's a little bit of a shift of gears oh man it's awesome but yeah hopefully this is fun for you all to check out and uh this is some very very high quality work this is no joke this is legit it, this is interesting so i'm assuming that wendy wendy must have definitely have um uh done the color guides for uh X-Men, Wildcats, Dark Ages, because so much of this is similar. In fact, it, it's it's really kind of trippy, the similarities between the two. Um, as most of you know, if you're fans of Wildstorm, um, like X-Men, Wildcats. So X-Men, Wildcats was four books. Yeah, Travis Charest did Silver Age. Jim Lee did Modern Age. Adam Hughes did Silver Age, and then Matt Broom did Dark Age. Travis was originally supposed to do one and four. Matt ended up taking it over after um, Travis just didn't, he was too slow. The, I inked Travis right around that time. He had finished X-Men Wildcats and was um, doing a series of um, New Horizons covers, so... That's like I said, me me seeing this book come out, I was this is probably like nineteen ninety seven. I'm frustrated. My career is going down in the dumps slowly and surely as I'm getting chiseled away by brutal deadlines and whatnot. And um then I when I got the Travis gig, everything started to to rise for me. But uh yeah, I was in a tough spot and uh Seeing these guys, you know, performing on such high-level books was really inspiring, though. Man, I wanted it so bad. It's like, put me in, coach! <laughs> I 
Remember I did like six samples over just all the best pencilers and that kind of raised some eyebrows. Like people started to go, hmm, okay. There's Jim right there. So let's see, we've got Sandra Hope. Uh, oh gosh, it's hard. This might be J. Scott Campbell or no, man, it's Tad. Uh, yeah, it's hard. That's Sandra and that's definitely Jim. This, I'm not sure who that is. That's funny. So we've got some kind of crazy cyborg dog race. This is a great freaking drawing, man. Look at this shit. Fuck, man, it was so good. His Stormwatch stuff is great, too. I mean, you can really kind of see him cut his teeth. It's, it's you know, I, I always mention it's fun to see someone when they're really good, but it's actually really interesting to watch the year or two before they um, blossom into their awesomeness um, to, you know, to see, like, where they're having successes um, along the way, you know, early on. Their stuff might be stiff or wonky or even funny, you know, kind of goofy, um, and then it just starts to, to slowly improve or quickly, you know. It will improve if you stick to it and you you have that um, stamina. You know that's the key. Again, Matt Matt was always pretty good at this stuff. I was I was was impressed by his sheets and drapery. Some cool texture here. All right, man. I honestly like this is so fun. I could have looked at four books. I only grabbed two, um, but uh, these almost look like more Wildstormers. So that looks like Eric. Maybe not though. But it looks a little like uh, there was a colorist named Eric Guerrero. I think that was his name. Oh man, it was so fun. Dude, these guys were legends. I mean, honestly, like, I, I've never really gone into the depth of, of, like, getting hired there and stuff like that. It, but, man, talk about, uh, like, just walking into, like, greatness. It was nuts. I remember the first couple times that I went to the studio, I was just, like, starstruck by everything. The whole thing. The studio was incredible. Wildstorm was designed by, I don't know, like a Disney designer or something like that. There was no straight walls. Everything was curved or even the walls were like at, at angles so you'd walk down the hallways and there was all these like weird shapes and then there'd be like a column like out of star trek and stuff like that weird shaped windows i mean it was really really neat and then just every person that worked there was a badass that was the thing it was pretty amazing Yeah, like this stuff. All right. As soon as I finish this, I've got to be disciplined and get to work. <laughs> Normally when I'm drawing, I don't watch the clock. Like, I mean, other than the fact that, you know, you pay attention to what time it is of the day. But I, I don't, like, go, oh, man, I'm, like, lagging. I need to hurry up um, too much. And, uh... Yeah, sometimes you'll you'll be drawing and like two hours will go by and you'll be like, oh man, did I spend too long on that? And then I'm just like, ah, it doesn't really matter. Just get it, just get it to look as good as as you can, and then just be done with it, you know. And sometimes it's interesting. There's a there's a part of me where you have to let it go too, um, you know. I, I kind of, in my mind, like for Crystal Planet, I'll, I'll pretend that there's almost like a virtual editor or like a FedEx deadline that I have to hit where it's like by 6 o'clock, you know, you need to be done with this. You've spent, you know, enough time on it. I think that creates surprises. This is really, really kick-ass. Um, Yeah, the, the deadline and having to turn stuff in. I, re I remember w working at Wildstorm, and when I would turn pages in, sometimes I would go back and forth five or ten times. Sandra would actually laugh at me because I'd, I'd go to the photocopier when I would be finished with a page and make a photocopy of it right before I would turn it into editorial. And um, 
I would make the photocopy, and when I would look at the photocopy, I would see something like there'd be like a little like line that was too long right there. Anything that would catch my eye, a line that went into the panel bar. I'm super, super particular, and um, <laughs> so I'd go back in my office, I'd fix it, and then I'd go back to the copier and make a copy, and then I'd look at the copy. And for whatever reason, when you make a photocopy, you spot shit that you don't see on the original board. I don't know what it is. But <laughs> But Sandra would hear me going back and forth, and she'd be like, oh, trying to turn in pages, Rich? And I'm like, yes. But I think all the artists have, have that to a certain extent. They may manage it differently, but yeah, it would like... Yeah, Matt, Matt really is good. Pretty sure he works for Sony and has for a long time now, or maybe he has his own company. I could be off on that, but I, I was under the impression that I think he, he works like for a video game company or has his own company and does a lot of stuff. I, I don't know what uh, exactly he's doing right at this moment. This is killer too, man. Yeah, it's really good. Damn. And this could be a book that really slipped through the cracks for a lot of people. I mean, I, I would imagine that, that it's like 50-50. I, I think that if you showed this to 100 comic book fans that are currently in the comics, um, just, just at random, maybe 30, 30 to 50 of the people, if they collected stuff a long time ago, will have seen this. If not, there's probably no way. It's good shit, man. I'm going to try something if we've got another nice page. Let me work actually i'll i'll do it this is a nice spread god he draws big characters so good okay let's see oh, okay this is perfect so what i'm going to do we'll look at this first and i'm going to try to turn this black and white there's a lot of gradation on it so it's not going to be one of those ones but i want to give you a sense of what these crazy pieces look like in black and white even if I can just get it close to a black and white file because it's pretty interesting. So, and this is another thing too that I'll point out with big double page spreads like this. So, so when we see it in print or we look at it on the computer screen, it's easy sometimes to go like, oh, her face looks a little stiff and stuff like that. When you're drawing on a gigantic 22 by 17 double page spread and it's right in front of your face, it's really, really difficult to manage things like proportion like her legs are kind of big compared to the upper part of her body. I mean, you really, you either have to do kind of a Campbell method of laying stuff out, which is he will take an 11 by 17 board and he divides it into four. And this is a page, this is a page, this is a page, this is a page. If it's a double page spread, then it'd be the top half of a spread. He'll lay it out small and you, it gives you a better sense of scale and you can hopefully catch things. Then he'll blow this up to the size that he needs to draw the page and then he light boxes his underdrawing um now matt may have done that too but even still a double page spread is it's very easy to have things drift and not see it because it's just so much shit in front of your eyes so let's turn this gray and then i'm going to try to remove a little bit of this it's not too bad let me uh i'll just darken the blacks a little bit Now, some of the effects and stuff like that may be obscuring things like this wouldn't have a soft focus on it um, in the original. And this could even be feathering. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is pretty awesome. I mean, this is a lot of work. This stuff up here. Matt was getting really good with, like, his... Um, uh, tech technology and and stuff like that. I think he he had a passion for it. And and again, if you went to Stormwatch, you'd be able to see it evolve. You know, his his first issue of Stormwatch, I want to say, is maybe uh, he maybe came out around issue eleven or twelve or thirteen, if I'm not mistaken. I could be off. Maybe it's eight or something. But um, and then he did he did about a year on Stormwatch, I think, and then and might have gone into this then. So and then. Letters column, always fun. Notes from the broom. So, and look, six weeks. So they were releasing on a six-week six week schedule. Now, that said, he may have started um, the book early. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's drawing it in six weeks. So don't freak out if you're an aspiring penciler and uh, you're like, I couldn't draw that much shit in six weeks. Most of us couldn't. 
you know, but you could maybe in three months, you know, he may, he may have had five or six month lead time on it. Hard to say. And, you know, this is another thing too. If you see someone with really, really detailed work and the first issue really blows you away, check out their third, fourth, fifth issues on the same title and see if they were able to keep it up. And that's always a good um, way to, to check too. So, all right, that's the end of this. That was really fun. Hopefully you got a kick out of the art. Hopefully it was something that um, you know you hadn't seen. And if not, it, hopefully if you have seen it, maybe you hadn't seen it in a long time. Uh, I want to say rest in peace to Edwin Rizal. Edwin sadly passed away about maybe eight years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, he was a young guy. Way, way, way too young to die. Um, and uh, sad, very sad. Um, and uh, all right. Yeah, you guys have a great day. And... Um, keep on rocking. <laughs> I'll be back in probably five or six days. I'm going to have Eric Kennedy on um, probably Monday or Tuesday of next week if he's available. We'll talk Arc Athena and just kind of have some fun. Maybe look at a little bit of art or, or look at Arc Athena art. Um, and uh, Kelsey and I will be back together. I haven't talked to Kelsey in a few weeks just because I know he's really busy. We're both trying to finish stuff. So, um, but uh, Kelsey wants to come on. So I've been holding back some books. Kelsey and I are going to do um, Nick Manabat, Cyberneri. Uh, we both wanted to do David Finch, um, the, the Cyberforce issues with Ash. Uh, we both wanted to do, um, uh, what was it? It was Aaron Weisenfeld. Uh, oh, the black and white um, death blow stories that he did. So Kelsey and I have a few uh, books that we're going to do together. So I've been, I, I've been, you know, obviously waiting to, to orchestrate that with him so that we can do those, but, uh, they'll be fun. And, uh, I, I mentioned to Ben Temple Smith that, that he's a big Nick Manabat fan. And so I was like, do you want to come on? So we might, we might have a three guests for the Nick Manabat, um, cybernary, um, one, which would be, uh, Ben Temple Smith, Kelsey and myself. And that would, that would be really fun to look at the work together. Sorry. You guys have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.